I'm Sergio, and this presentation was done uh, together with Cristiano. Unfortunately, we couldn't be part of Agile uh, Testing Days USA as I got COVID and, well, Cristiano was in, a, in another conference at the same time. But nevertheless, I decided to record this and share this talk with you. I hope you enjoy it. In our systems, in our teams, we see many times problems appearing, small problems, small timeouts, small errors appearing, and many times we discard them. And suddenly, uh, as soon as our application starts getting more and more use, those problems can suddenly become huge, huge problems that are really hard to handle. So ignoring these problems at the start can lead us to great problems at hand. Another problem that also happens is uh, related with features. We suddenly see ourselves adding more and more features on top of our existing ones. And we know that probably we have some technical debt and some things we need to handle and to improve in our products, but still we are pressured to add in more and more features and all these wires together then can really become really a bottleneck in the future for us to do anything uh, value on top of them. So, someone uh, said this once that quality can't be postponed. It was a really great developer. Well, probably you know him, Abraham Lincoln, developer country, developer of the United States. And, well, it didn't say exactly that, but he said that you can't escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. In other words, we need to tackle things right now. We cannot postpone them because otherwise they can get great negative impacts in the future and namely in the future of our products. So we need really to embrace challenges. And what happens in teams is that we are pressured to have great quality or bug free products even if that's really something impossible. And we are also pressured to have uh, more and more frequent releases. And these two things, quality and speed, they, they seem like two opposites of the same, con same coin. But actually, I don't think they are. I think we can have quality at speed and the studies have proved us that. But for that, we need to fight inconspicuousness. What strange word is that? Well, inconspicuous, let me read it. It's something that is not clearly visible or attracting attention. Someone who is inconspicuous does not attract attention to themselves. So it's not really something even. It's something that's there. We probably know that it's there, but we don't do anything about it. So we need to handle uh, inconspicuousness because inconspicuousness also happens within our teams. So do you see yourself in this picture where you are one of these persons where uh, taking a specific bit of your product, Probably because you have these dark goggles, you, you don't see the whole picture. You, you probably don't have an understanding that you're working uh, around an elephant. Well, the same happens here uh, in this analogy. Uh, we can see it also in our teams. Because our teams, most times, they don't really understand the why. They don't understand the what. They don't also understand how. 
And they also don't understand the whom, to whom they are doing what they are doing or whom uh, who is or should be involved. And it's not really uncommon to see this because uh, we are so focused in our daily tasks. And also it happens because we have many silos going in our teams. So we can have uh, silo roles like developers and testers. Sometimes we have an, um, silo teams all together, like having a team just for development and another team for uh, QA and another team for uh, doing operations. And this is really a problem because you will lack communication. You will lack uh, a common understanding. So you don't have a really uh, bird's eye perspective of, uh, of the whole problem and how, how it really is. So do you think you have this kind of inconspicuousness in your teams, in your process, in your workflows, or even your tools? Well, <laughs> probably you'll have because Every single of uh, us has this kind of challenges. And we need to realize that we do have uh, these, these blind sp spots. So, but many times we don't realize it all together. Um, for example, question yourself, do you understand the product? Do you understand the the users that are using the product, do you understand the environments that are working on? Do, do your team members have access to environments so everyone can, act, can help at any moment? Uh, do you know how, where to check the, for example, the pipeline status? Do you, do you understand what it means, for example, when some test fails, what are the, the impacts? What is the feature that is being blocked because of that, uh, that uh, failure? Is it relevant or not? Are you covering uh, the, all the features with some, any sort of tests? So you can have many different blind spots in your, in your teams at different levels, but uh, you need, we need first uh, have an environment where we can actually um, address these blind spots. I'll come back to that in a second, but before I go there, I think that some, some of us have this um, approach uh, where we simply uh, say that, okay, we need to, in order to have this better understanding, to have this better collaboration. Okay, what we do is that uh, all people working together, having tons of data, uh, have tons of information, uh, people being focused on their tasks, pe people getting notified whenever something happens, have these spikes for doing investigations or having plenty of tests. And well, the thing is that uh, this kind of approach, I don't think it's really the best one because uh, instead of having people working together, we should really think about having people collaborating with one another. And for example, it's not about having tons of data, it's about having visibility about what is really happening. happening. And it's, it's, uh, it's not about freedom to do some stuff randomly. It's about having people's autonomy and having people's uh, team members really empowered to uh, decide and to make changes. But it's also, for example, it's not about having more and more tests. It's about understanding whether we are covering our, our user stories or our features with the right kind of tests. So more than tests, we need to understand about the coverage that way we are really providing. And it's not about providing tons of notifications, it's about having really a true communication. 
So whenever we, uh, and whenever that I mentioned these moments ago, um, in order to deal with these challenges that we have in our teams, in order to improve our process and our tooling, um, we need, first of all, to have this environment where we can be free and open to share. Do you have this environment where, where when some, something happens, uh, people start having this kind of blame game and not really uh, trying to uh, discuss the, the root causes instead? So we need to have a, uh, to have an environment that really fosters people to really raise questions, uh, really to uh, try to struggle for having uh, improvements always going on, trying really trying to understand the bits uh, that are showing up and that we cannot really um, ignore because. In hand, we really need to improve, improve our understanding and improve the products that we are doing. So it's really uh, to, to have, uh, it's really great to have this kind of fearless environment that should be promote, promoted from, uh, from the top as a culture change. And well, this is not all because we also need to have uh, systems that allow us to do some sort of changes and do experiments without fear of breaking the whole thing. So we need to improve the architecture of the system. So uh, the small changes, the small experiments that we do, uh, we can do it safely, safely, and eventually we can easily roll back if that's the case. But uh, this we need to now um, think about the the different kind of blind spots, the different kinds of inconspicuous the parts that we can have in our uh, in our teams, depending on the process that we are or the, the methodologies or frameworks that we are adopting. And there are always uh, things that we ignore or that we tend to forget. So, for example. In, uh, and since most teams are working nowadays in an agile uh, kind of uh, environment, so most teams are adopting, uh, most 90% of the teams are adopting Scrum, um, according to latest studies. So basically you have sprints, then you have uh, a requirement and measurement tool or project management tool, then you have uh, probably a test management tool, and then we have an operation teams in order to assist on the deployment and the, on the uh, maintenance. What could be here the blind spots, the things that inhibit you from actually working better towards a better product and a more uh, frequent uh, cadence of releases? Do you know where to check, for example, the status of the sprint? Does everyone know how to, how to do that? And does it include the test results? Or do you have the test results somewhere else? And it's all, only, for example, some, only some team members can actually go there and check, the, and, and check the test results. Do you need to actually look at different tools in order to understand if you are ready to, to, to deploy to production? Do you understand whether the deployment to production was successful? Do you know how your system is behaving in production? So probably uh, in most teams, they, they can have this kind of uh, inconspicuous items. Uh, it's common, uh, but we can do something about it. So instead of having, for example, uh, different tools, we can have probably one tool where we can, uh, for example, uh, have track both our user stories, the epics and the themes, for example, and have there the, also the, the testing related progress in, 
in that same place. So if your team, for example, is already using Jira, why not there already uh, also have the um, visibility about the test results connected with the, your user stories and your deliverables in general. But also you, you can have uh, a board, for example, board to share the information between uh, the different uh, team members, no matter if we are talking about regular team members or even a, other uh, stakeholders such as C-level stakeholders that, that want to understand how, what's the status of the project. And it, it's also uh, something um, worth mentioning that we should promote um, a, a culture and the tools should also support that where we can provide feedback. Every team member can provide feedback. Why, why shouldn't a tester provide feedback on the user stories? Everyone should be able to provide feedback on the user stories as soon as possible. And the same on the test. Maybe you are not doing the right test. So why, uh, why can't any team member provide feedback on the test or for on, on the ongoing test plans, for example? So having this, um, and having this uh, uh, environment where people can easily collaborate and provide feedback and the feedback is visible is really great in order to uncover problems and deal with those problems as soon as possible. But then whenever we are moving more to DevOps and to this kind of infinite loop that you can see here, I would say that the challenges that, that we can have, they suddenly increase by uh, by at least one order of magnitude because you start suddenly having this uh, pipeline concept uh, with um, with continuous integration continuous delivery continuous deployment um, uh, all sorts of tests uh, going on uh, and uh, even observability eventually you can uh, can also be adopting it in order to track what is happening in, in production. Well, it's also common that we have a bunch of tools in order to assist the, the team in, the, in a DevOps environment. And that's why you, we even have this kind of periodic table of DevOps tools, uh, because there, are, there could be like a ton of tools in order to assist us. Well, nowadays we know that uh, we have uh, our teams are using seven or more tools um, on a daily basis, so that's something that we should have uh, in mind. But in this kind of environment, do you know, do, or anyone in the team knows, whenever like, the pipeline concept that you have there, when the pipeline is read? And what are the conclusions that you can take from that? Um, and well, eventually, does everyone have access to the pipeline? And if the pipeline shows an error, what does it mean? Can you relate that to the, to the deliverables that you are working on? So by having this kind of... Um, DevOps environment, we could also have these tons of tools, ton of tools going on that only eventually some of the team members may, may be um, able to use them or may be able to understand them. And that's one thing that we also need to tackle. So it's time to fight back and deal with those inconspicuousness in your, uh, in your team in case you are use, adopting DevOps. And first of all, is try to have this uh, onboarding process where you can onboard new team members so the team members can be really uh, up to speed with all the tooling that you are using or with all the process that you are using. It's also uh, worth uh, adopting uh, an approach where you have developers and testers 
collaborating with one another studying, instead of having them uh, side by side, but working each one working on their things. More on that I have. And that, remember that I mentioned that you can have a bunch of tools. We know that people are using uh, seven or more tools. So probably we need some sort of process that does not break our autonomy, as I mentioned, but that um, kind of guides the experiments that we should try out. Because we, we know that um, more than adding new tools to the stack, it's really important that the tools that we are adding, they provide value, but they also uh, come with flexibility because flexibility is one of the main aspects that make make the, the teams happier because you know teams are more and more uh, going to be agile going more to the to have um, their own needs that change with time so therefore we need flexible tools but as soon as we are having more and more tools, it's also important to um, work towards having visibility in our uh, main tool of choice. So we can have one better understanding of what, we, what is happening and then eventually dig into the, uh, another tool to dig into the details. And another uh, thing that is really, really important that many teams have been um, working on this for for quite a long time is documentation or at least they have been fighting um, the documentation topic uh, and well the, the recent Zora research report shows that documentation is really crucial because it can make our teams more efficient because the if, if we have an up-to-date documentation, people feel more empowered and uh, to contribute sooner uh, to the projects. So recapping, we need to realize that we have blind spots. It's common that we have these uh, blind spots that we are not paying enough attention and that are somehow uh, inhibiting us from doing better or working better as a team. But in order to deal uh, with a challenge, we we'll need to have this kind of safe environment where people can question stuff, where people can raise questions, but also where uh, people uh, can be um, fearless to try experiments without breaking the system. So we also need to have resilient systems and uh, systems that provide uh, a, a certain level of stability. It's also um, important that people understand the, the ultimate goal and, uh, and share the results while they work towards that goal. Not Tools are not, let's say, uh, specific to one person or to a group of persons. We need to assume that tools can be used by uh, all the team members because whenever a problem occurs, uh, we need to be able to solve it quickly. We cannot be dependent on uh, a specific user uh, for any reason whatsoever. And whenever we are doing experiments and experiments and considering new tools, we should uh, consider whether that tool is really bringing value, the kind of value that it's bringing, and how well it integrates with the existing ecosystem, and whether it's flexible you know, enough. Because probably we have new requirements for that tool um, anytime soon. So we need to work towards having more and more visibility to expose what is happening in our systems and in our process. And by having that visibility, that will uh, allow us to uh, have more and more collaboration going on. 
collaboration also uh, increases visibility. They have this kind of uh, close relation. It's really, really important that we work uh, towards uh, making the inconspicuous conspicuous so we can handle the, uh, the problems as soon as possible. I want to share with you two experiments that you can also try it out in your teams. And this one's, well, um, the, 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 this first one is about uh, visibility and how we can expose, uh, namely the test depth uh, concept, which uh, it's, it's about all the testing that we should be doing but for for some reason we are not doing so this exercising exercise is uh, is based on something that i learned from uh, robert mini and i advise you to try it out it's quite simple you pick a cardboard you split it in four quadrants with the things that make your testing impossible complex untrustworthy um, for example or slow and then you you together as a team figure out possible solutions for each one of these uh, issues that you discover. And this is a great way to deal with the, these blind spots that are really impacting your team, to make these blind spots visible, but also uh, for you to be able to address them. Because sometimes those issues that you may find, they are not just impacting a single person, they are impacting the whole team. So this is a cool exercise and it only requires a cardboard. And then this other exercise was something that we did in one of our teams. And this was mainly about collaboration. So we had this ongoing discussion about efficiency and we knew that we are not working on the best way. We were doing pull requests the pull request would be reviewed, then uh, will be the issue would be moved to the developer, uh, to the tester, the tester would test it, would, op would then eventually open a bug, then so on and so forth. So this was not really too agile. So uh, we needed to really uh, improve. And from conversations uh, that turned this uh, these things uh, more and more visible, we figure out that we need to change our mindset from a work to a more collaboration perspective. So we tried out ensemble programming and the testers were also part of those sessions. So the tests could provide feedback as soon as possible. Uh, so test, uh, the feature was being tested from the start, testability was provided from the start. Uh, but also the tester would understand about the, um, the, um, how the issue is, was being built. Uh, and it was a great way uh, to have these two uh, different roles working more closely um, on a true collaboration approach. So in the end, we, we would be more efficient. And we also figured out that, for example, having also pair programming sessions could also be a great way for new uh, new team members uh, before they actually start uh, on the ensemble sessions. So dealing with this, uh, this, with this uh, inconspicuous uh, part that we knew that is not, was not really making our work effective, more efficient, uh, efficient enough or having uh, great quality uh, allowed us working towards that goal to have more and more efficient efficiency and better understanding uh, and also have better quality right from, from the start. Time for a demo. We'll now see a demo showcasing how we can improve visibility, uh, have a good understanding about coverage, foster a, a collaboration culture while giving the team uh, the autonomy that is needed in order to, uh, to choose whatever test automation frameworks and 
CI CD tools uh, the team uh, the team wants while at the same time having uh, visibility in one single place and we need also to uh, support the the team in their decision to choose different testing approaches for example test automation and exploratory testing altogether so in this in this project uh, we'll have um, uh, several user stories some of them will be part of epics and they can be part of a of a specific project uh, release or they and they can even be part of, of a given sprint these user stories can be covered by different types of tests manual scripted tests uh, typical automated tests implemented in JUnit for example or Robot or something else uh, we can also use different uh, CI CD tools such as GitHub Actions, uh, Jenkins, or uh, whatever. But in the end, we need to be able to track the, not only the results, but the impacts of those results so we can then decide whether to make the release or not. So, time to uh, jump into Jira and see, uh, for example, our sprint where uh, we have uh, the two user stories starting with the first one that is covered by a, a manual test and the cucumber scenario uh, the manual uh, scripted test can be uh, can have um, several iterations so we can do the driving uh, for it uh, so we can run one uh, one time those results uh, those steps against uh, a specific combination of values then run it once again against a uh, different combination of values and that's that's fine uh, we can also have the uh, cucumber bdd scenario or gherkin uh, bdd scenario in general uh, and uh, and the team can can make the specification here in, in your side um, we also could have uh, for example the other user story uh, being covered by different types of tests so for example this user this uh, the this other user story uh, is covered by uh, by an exploratory test and eventually by some robot framework tests and Having this flexibility to support different test approaches uh, is, is actually great because we can then decide the way that we want without losing visibility about the, the, um, the results uh, of our testing independently of the approach that we choose. So let's, let's look at our usability test for example and how it looks like. Okay, so our usability test as a charter, uh, we can uh, report the, the results of our session, including taking screenshots. And then if we go back to the user story, we can see the impacts of, uh, of that being shown on the user story. Uh, so we can decide whether to make the, the release or not. So if we go back here to the user story, you can see that, okay, the user story is considered to be not okay because some of the tests, in this case, the exploratory test was marked as a failure. And then, well, even though we have the, the automated test passing, we can then decide that this is a no-go. But uh, moving ahead, uh, for example, whenever we look at uh, uh, at the, the release perspective, we think on the deliverables, we think on the impacts. So more than the test results, we think about the impacts of those results. So using a, an overall coverage report, we can uh, group our, uh, for example, our user stories by priority and quickly assess how they are on a, on a version. For example, here I can see that uh, I have one of highest uh, priority that uh, is marked currently as not okay uh, because some of the tests are failing for it 
So this is a great way for me to group the, 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 the requirements or the user stories or the epics by different criteria and then um, take a decision whether to make the release or not based on, on the, the results, on the heuristic for coverage that I can see here on Jira size uh, side using, by using X-Ray. But remember that it's also important to be able to, to track uh, all that is going on and also the impacts. So we, whenever you run some tests, for example, you can have a bunch of tests that are uh, covering some user story that is part of a epic. So whenever you report, for example, a defect in one of those runs, for example, in this exploratory test, testing session, you can see, okay, there was a defect here, report for this session, uh, that is, oh, well, it's impacting this user story and this, uh, and this epic as a consequence. Then, well, it's up to me to decide whether, uh, how to manage this and uh, whether or not uh, I should be able to release the, the feature even though I have this problem reported. One other aspect that is also uh, important um, in order to foster visibility and collaboration is by having dashboards or boards uh, for showing the overall progress of our uh, testing um, and well sharing with all the team members, uh, including uh, by providing visibility ab about the overall uh, status of our deliverables, of our epics, or mm, if you want to make a list of requirements and uh, show how they are for a given version or in a given environment, we can easily do that and share that in a board so the team can uh, track this in real time in their, uh, in their, in their daily basis uh, tool that they use for project management, uh, in this case, uh, Jira. We have many inconspicuous challenges in our teams and all this inconspicuousness affect the quality and the value and the speed that we provide value. So in order to deal uh, with these uh, inconspicuous challenges, we need to work towards having greater and greater visibility to make the hint even and or the the things that are not attracting enough attention more and more visible so we can really act on them as a team. So visibility will help and foster collaboration, but collaboration will in turn also increase visibility. And by having greater collaboration, we, have, we want to have uh, increased efficiency, better understanding, and in turn, this allow, will allow us to have greater quality. The value that we provide to, to our end users will also increase and we will be able to have uh, uh, releases at a more frequent pace. But one thing is that, that is also worth mentioning is that we can work towards having this visibility and collaboration through more uh, enhancement of our own process, but tools can also uh, help us on this, on this matter because tools can also provide us visibility about what is happening in a single place, in a uh, single source of truth. Um, tools can also foster uh, a more collaboration approach so if you have more and more silos of uh, uh, tools that don't connect with one another, they will promote separation of uh, information which will harden the work, uh, the collaboration work that you need in order to deal with, with inconspicuousness. My name is Sergio Freire. I, you can find me on my uh, site, sergiofreire.com. And, and also on LinkedIn and Twitter using the Dark Telecom handle. I'm passionate about software development, technology, testing, exploratory testing, test automation. Well, uh, always about providing value to end users 
through the art of better crafting software. So the next time that, that you see a door, some, something uh, catching your attention and you pass there, uh, don't ignore the door. Don't be afraid of, of opening the door because the door may, ha may hide a challenge. But the sooner that you uh, deal with that challenge together as a team, the sooner you'll be able to move forward and to work on additional uh, features for your, uh, for your product and for your end users. So deal with inconspicuous today. Let's fight it together. Thank you. Happy testing. And happy Agile Testing Days!